Hey everyone, welcome back to another Saints training camp recap. I'm your host, John Hendricks, over here on Saints News Network. Day 10 in New Orleans, last one for fans for, you know, until Thursday, but a lot of action went down. We'll get you caught up on everything in just a moment. But first, as always, I want to thank Justin Burgess of Ben Pro for sponsoring today's show. Again, if you have a business in the greater New Orleans region, be sure to give him a call for all your employee insurance needs or benefit needs, 504-888-8038. Again, Justin Burgess, he handles accounts like NOLA Motorsports and many others. Give him a shout. Tell him John Hendricks sent you. So New Orleans, day 10, we're in double digits. Doesn't feel like it. And we're one week away from a preseason game. So we got the Chiefs at noon next week. So this time next week, about 4-18-ish is what I've got right now. I, I We're going to be talking about all the happenings from preseason action, an actual game to break down. And we're at this point of training camp where I think it feels like, all right, we're just ready to see this stuff happen in real time. And, of course, we don't know who's going to play when, who's going to do what. But what we do know is just kind of talking about attendance today. Let's start there. A um, few players that we didn't expect to see. So Rashid Shahid, Traquan Smith. They're dealing with groin injuries. They were not there uh, or present today. Um, Taysom Hill, he was not present. He had a veteran rest day as well as Ryan Ramchek. Uh, then you had Max Garcia that wasn't there, Andres Pete. Tyron Matthew was there briefly at the beginning of stretch, but he had a hoodie on with his jersey. Clearly a veteran rest day, Dennis Allen saying after practice. And then Demario Davis is kind of obviously the big one there. Um, Davis has, is having imaging done on his calf. Dennis Allen said he doesn't believe it's anything serious, but this is two days in a row we don't see Demario Davis. Not a common sight. I know it has a lot of people concerned. We'll see how this plays out. DeMarco Jackson taking reps for him at middle linebacker in his place. And so um, as far as today goes, you know, injuries it sucks. You know, Benjamin was officially placed on IR today, and the team signed John Trey Kirkland, uh, an XFL standout. And somebody that, you know, it's a little bit interesting, praise for his special teams ability. So we'll see what kind of happens there. Receiver room, it's all over the place right now. So there's up for uh, plenty of, of things up for grabs right now. But as far as injuries go, two of them to pass along. Coda Martin, he's a, a, a reserve offensive lineman. He got hurt with his ankle today. Dennis Allen saying it's not season ending. Same thing with Lucas Crow. We'll get him to him second. Doesn't believe it's season ending, but something that they're going to have to have further tests and evaluations on, but he hurt his ankle. And then Lucas Kroll guy that we just talked up that was doing extremely well in, in practice the other day, he, he hurt his tailbone. And so it was a little bit hard of a play. He was doing one-on-one -on -one reps. He was, um, you know, working against the defender, throw a fade route up to him. Defender kind of has his arm a little bit, so he can't brace for the, the going to the ground, but it comes down hard tailbone injury he tried to walk it off a little bit but he did not go to the outdoor session and of course we'll just kind of pay attention to see how things go that just definitely doesn't feel good if you've ever fell on your backside or anything like that and don't brace and you kind of go fall from a distance it hurts so hopefully curls okay but you know they got to press on they've got five tight ends on the roster again this kind of puts jimmy graham into focus a little bit you got a veteran and jesse james as well in that room as well as Taysom hill so We'll see how that kind of plays out. Um, but, you know, it's unfortunate anytime you have to deal and talk with injuries. We talked about the offensive line concerns. But, you know, at any rate, that's kind of the rundown as far as things go. Now, as far as the action go goes, you know, I'll start with um, the not so good. So the not so good is the offense and team drills did not look that good today. So we praised them yesterday for how good things were, especially Derek Carr in the red zone. But today – they had a very ugly sequence in team drills. So they had ran three separate team drills. One was a, one was mostly runs. The second one is the one I'm talking about with Derek Carr. So starts with Michael Thomas, a pass breakup by Elante Taylor, who had an excellent day. I think he's looking really good. Him and Marshawn Lattimore are probably some of the best ones that stand out in training camp. They are looking outstanding. Great news for Saints fans. And Taylor's playing outside, so he's also getting work in the slot. But – you know, between him, Paulson Adebo, and, and obviously Bradley Roby, this is a strong cornerback position. It's something we praise, talk about as a strength of the team, but he had a really good day. Now, the next route, you know, next rep, Carr came and he targeted Chris Lave on a deep post route. 
overthrew him. Taylor was in coverage on that one, but, you know, overthrew him. That would have been a big play. A lot of people waiting. Might have had to do with Peyton Turner putting some pressure on. He beat Trevor Penning on his rep. So good to see Peyton Turner continue to put things together. And Trevor Penning, you know, he talked to this yesterday. He knows his pass pro is where he has to work the most. He's definitely made leaps and strides there. We've pointed him out, highlighted him on Saints News as far as our observations and recaps. Be sure you check those out. Saints.media for the easiest way to get to all the observations recap. It's a lot to read. It's a lot to take in. I get it. I understand. But I want to make sure that you know everything that we know. So you're very informed, just like everybody else there. So um, and so they had that play to Lave that didn't go. And then you had another pressure. Nathan Shepard whips inside. Car takes off running. That wasn't a good sequence. But before that, they actually had a low snap. No play on it. That was a tough sequence to have. And then the next one, it was a covered sack. No play again. James Hurst got hurt in the process. It looks like it was hand-related, but he did return to action after going inside for a little bit. But, um, you know, that was the other thing. And then the last one was a low throw. He had to throw away um, with with Jonathan Abram in rushing him in pressure. And he actually got hit. Carr got hit low on that play. It was kind of like a hold-your-breath moment because Carr got hit low, throw away, he was okay, but you know, after that, very frustrated, visibly frustrated. It was not a good sequence for the offense. They didn't do so well and do so hot in red zone after that with team. Um, you know, so it was just a little bit tough on the day with it. But look, these things happen. Again, if you're basing everything off of just one practice, shame on you. We don't. We try to get the whole entire picture. It's you know, you're gonna have your good days and bad days with the defense, but you know, it wasn't just him. Jameis struggled some. Uh, Jake Hayner struggled a little bit. He threw a real bad pass to uh, that was intercepted by Smoke Monday. After Nico Lalos had some pressure on him that made him throw, it was a bad decision. He was looking really good then, and then he makes the pass. A couple other things to, to really point out. So the team was working on 2v2 inside the red zone, and so kind of just set the, the stages. So you know, normally praise one-on-ones. We talk about one-on-one process, and, you know, that catered a lot to the offense. But basically it was in goal line, red zone, if you want to call it. It's more like from the five, seven-yard line, and you got two receivers on one side, and you got two corners or two secondary players, two defensive backs, let's put it that way, that we're defending against. And so the concept was either rub routes, picks, all those types of different things from the route tree. It was really awesome to see that. Um, definitely had some really good moments there. Michael Thomas had some good moments there. Uh, Chris Olave had some good moments. Lynn Bowden Jr. I mean, you could just kind of go down the list. Alante Taylor had some good moments in, in coverage. But you know, the concept is obviously to just try to score on it and you know deal with picks and stuff. A lot of jawing going back and forth between the offense and the defense there, the, the receivers and the defensive back. Receivers felt like they were getting held a little bit. Defensive backs probably kind of about putting words and saying what was said is – Kind of like, hey, you know, they're just getting in their feels with some of the way that things are going out. So we touched on the emotion and the uh, tippers flaring over yesterday, picked up a little bit more today in that aspect. And so that was really about it, though. But awesome drill to see. Carr went to do uh, work in the red zone again. And so um, I tell you, one of the best plays that we saw today, a uh, couple of them, I liked it you know, one of the ones where they hit James Washington in the back of the end zone. That was from uh, Derek Carr. Really, really nice hookup. And for the receiver competition, you need somebody to step up. Washington has looked apart. We've talked about Brian Edwards. Really been a disappointment so far. We'll see how things progress there. But Washington's a guy that, you know, maybe can progress a little bit, show that he's more than just a vertical threat. But I think one of the plays of the day was in red zone is from 14 yards out. And, you know, of course, I'm to my notes. That's why I'm not looking at you, looking at what I have to say. So, uh, but 14 yards out, you got Kendra Miller running a fade route, wheel route, excuse me, on Pete Warner uh, from car touchdown. Beautiful route, beat Warner on the on the coverage, and it makes the catch. I mean, again, we talk about everybody, and I said this on radio today that people don't look at Miller or Williams as these pass catching threats, but they've been developed more here and Williams was a guy who caught passes in Green Bay so don't think he can't take take catch passes or anything like that Miller's a guy that they're just giving him more feeding him more hasn't been a perfect product but a really big moment for the rookie just being able to 
get that on a wheel route, look good in seven on sevens and make a big play. You know, those are things that you like to see, right? I, I think that's the big things that, that happen. Um, let's talk about Will Lutz. He's 32 or 35 in training camp today. Uh, after today, he went eight for eight on the day. Boom kicks, perfect kicks. I mean, this is a guy that hit from 47, 52, uh, 62. I mean, he was all over the place today. And so big day for him. Talk to him after practice. Look, he understands the competition side. He looks like he says he's feeling a lot better, obviously, and things, and it shows. I mean, a couple misses here and there. He just he said it the other day. He had a terrible day, five of seven, and you know one of the other ones that he missed. But he knows all three of those misses and such. And so one of the things that happened at practice is that they put it on him at the end of the practice, make a fifty-two yarder, and the team doesn't have to run gassers. He delivered. Very excited between him and Blake Gilligan, and I know the team appreciated not having to run gas. Dennis Allen obviously joked, too, that he didn't have to do it as well. So, look, we've got a lot of different things that happen. You know, some of the other players that I'd say, starting to see some flashes from Brian Brisset. I know he was out the other day, but good flashes here. You're starting to see some flashes from Isaiah Foskey. We talked about A.T. Perry already. Jordan Howden, look, he's he played first-team rep safety again with uh, Marcus May today not Tyron Matthew. So look, he's a guy that's progressing up and, and I think there's going to be a big opportunity. He's got to work on a lot of things. I'm sure before he's completely ready, but a good sign of where things are going for him because may is a guy that like Camara could serve a suspension to start the year. And so you're going to need a backup plan to work with Tyron Matthew. It could be JT gray. It could be a Ugo Amadi. It could be Lonnie Johnson, Jr. Jonathan Abram. It could be also Jordan Howden. So that's something to pay attention to. Um, I really liked what I saw from DeMarco Jackson and run defense and run support. I think he's a guy that's also progressing. And look, another one that I'll tell you that that kind of stood out to me is Nephi Sewell, guy that we kind of overlooked, you know, and overlook and, and such. He's a special teams guy. He's really starting to come in a little bit more and be noticeable uh, in, in it, especially in run support, made some plays in special teams, made some plays in coverage. So it's always good to see that, um, that you're having a, pro- uh, a good thing because – you know, Eagles signed two promising linebackers that if the Saints needed somebody, they're not going to get that chance right now because Zach Cunningham's off the board and so is Miles Jack. If it was that serious, I think they would have worked him out and obviously tried that. But, you know, this team right now just needs to hold on, stay healthy. Um, other things that might have stood out, look, I, I think, you know, again, we hit on Taylor, um, just not a, a good showing from the offense today. Blake Gilkin punted, um, looked pretty good as far as the offensive line goes. Just to point out a few things there, uh, you know, right now, the way things went, especially with not having your full complement, Pennings at left tackle, Hurst is at left guard, and then your right side, Storm Norton is your guy that's kind of taking those reps for Ryan Ramchek. So we'll see how that kind of continues to play out. Preseason is really going to be super important for a lot of guys. I mean, it always is, right, with your evaluation process. And, again, can these guys who have shown up in practice put it together next Sunday? We'll see. Um, And, of course, we've got one more day, day 11 ahead of us on Monday, just kind of set the stage. And then we've got a day off on Tuesday. Then we hit it for a few days. Team's going to be off on Saturday for preparation walkthroughs for their game on Sunday. Should get a better understanding and idea of what we might see from this team. As far as first team reps, I've, I've kind of said it. I think we're going to see a lot of Jameis, maybe a little bit of Taysom at quarterback. And then we'll also see plenty of Jake Hayner. I don't know how much we'll see of Derek Carr. I don't know how much we need to see of Derek Carr. I could be fine with just one series, one good series with him and Mike and some of these other guys, but, you know, they're de- de- deep at a lot of positions, and this is going to be a ch- chance for a lot of these guys to shine, especially when it comes to defense too. So it'll be in the Dome. It'll be fun. And then the week after that, <laughs> right after the Chiefs game, we're heading to uh, L.A. for Chargers and joint practices. So exciting times, a lot of fun stuff. As always, go to saints.media or si.com slash NFL slash saints. Follow me on Twitter at John J. Hendricks, and then check us out. Got all the video recaps, podcast format. That's also a thing. I've put all the links in there for you guys, um, but I appreciate all the support. If you have anything, again, we talked about it, probably going to end up doing a live stream at some point, just kind of get some more engagement because I know you guys have tons of questions and I can ramble on and talk on and all that stuff, but I'd really love to talk to you guys about more. But at any rate, that'll do it for this one. 
wrapping up day 10 of Saints training camp. John Hendricks for Saints News Network, signing out.